after you. Today we talk about what's the ROI of your mom plus Pitbull coming to Youngstown, Ohio. Very exciting. So we're going to talk about his Content Inc. model, uh, some other fun stuff. We are live at Rise Pies and back for the third time, the trifecta after the Kentucky Derby last weekend. Ooh, Mr. Nice. Ralph, stay sassy, Y-Town. Hey, Jack. Hello, everybody. Good, good day. Good day. Nice hey, to cat. See. Hey, why do we always meet in restaurants? Dude, we're like the big <laughs> Chuck and little John of like the Youngstown exactly, restaurant scene. Exactly. This I'm is gonna, amazing. So uh, I'm going to go live on my side here. We'll be stereo live. Let's do that, okay, brother. I'm going to go live. So right it here. is awesome to have you back in to the Do You Live Marketing Show for the third time and appreciate all the support that you're giving to Do You Live as we come down the stretch. But today, what we want to talk about a big, a guy that I'm a huge fan of. In the national marketing scene, is a guy by the name of Barry, Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you don't know him, uh, definitely check him out. He's a leader out there in the, the world of marketing today. A few years ago, he asked a question, what's the ROI of your mom? And the reason why he asked that question wow, that's... is this, is that I talk to so many people on a consistent basis about social media, and they say, we understand the value. Mm -hmm. But we don't really get any business out of it. And he said, you know, what's the ROI of a a piano to like a guy like Billy Joe or Elton John right. versus me. Right. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So the piano has is a cost center for me. I can't even carry the bucket. But he says, I know how to play Facebook, I know how to play right. Twitter and Instagram, so that helps my business. And then you start to talk about the intangibles with you know, a parent, a mom, especially coming into Mother's Day. And you know, your mom slogs you to baseball games, picks you up, cooks you dinner, and at the end of the day, can you map a direct correlation to the dollars and cents that you're making today based upon that? Not exactly, but we know that that's an extremely valuable thing. It's the same thing with social media. Right. We invest into Facebook, into Twitter, and into Instagram. What's the direct correlation of value? There always isn't one, but you know that you're building long-term ROI value. So, Ralph. Right, and ROI, return on investment. Return on investment. And speaking of that, my mom just joined on my live over here. Hi, mom. Thanks, Ms. Bajak, for joining us. Happy really Mother's appreciate Day. it. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We sure. have we have so many that we uh, you know that we can cover, but actually, I'm going to do a special Mother's Day episode over the weekend, Ooh, so we'll, nice. we'll we'll get there. But um, Ralph, let's talk about for a second. You know the ROI, you know of 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 your mom. Well, you know it, it it's so crucial. I think growing up. It's the key. I mean, you're, you know, when you're younger and um, your mom, it, you know, she is taking to baseball games. She does teach you how to be sensitive as a man. You know, it's like my father worked. You know, my dad, I wouldn't see him. So my mom was crucial in keeping us all together. You know, and I'm not saying anything like, but we had a great, you know, great family, mom, father, always there. My mom always took us everywhere, every, you know, did things. And it's just like she teaches you a different, as a male, I think it's so important for a mother to teach that sensitive stuff to a male. You know, where my dad is, you know, like you fall and I have a bone sticking out of my skin. He's like, you know, shake it off and put some <laughs> Robitussin on it, you know, like Chris Rock says. But, you know, but the mother, so you need the coddling, you need the, you know, so I, I and I think that's, you know, when I, when I was going through, I, I would graduate high school and I'm like, mom, I don't know if I really want to go to school. I want to take a year off. She right. says, you want to take a year off? We'll get you a job at the water department. Not saying anything that's not a bad job. All I'm saying is, but when I was there, we had to go in basements and read meters. Okay. So I'm thinking, so I got the job in the summertime, and after about two days, I said, Mom, I'm going to college in September. <laughs> so, I mean, that you know, they, they know how to play and tweak a little bit with the people, and that's, that's what it is. Well, Pops the, probably would have laid the hammer and put... Oh, put, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah put he a, was a silent killer. Right in the back of the head. So yeah, yeah, no, you're yeah, going. Yeah. Silent killer. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, you obviously at this, you know, you can't put, you know, you can't put the measurement up, up, upon that, right? And, right. I, and I can remember, um, you know, I can remember back, you know, college-wise from my, my experience is that, you know, my mom threw me in the car and we started visiting Physically colleges. Physically threw you in? For me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I think she did. My mom's Italian too. She was real little though. She says, you're getting yeah. in the car and we're going yeah. here, we're going to yeah. go there. And we went visiting colleges and meeting with, you know, coaches on recruiting trips and things like that. Um, and so, you know, she didn't she didn't do that. And you know, I don't know. Like, you don't put me in the car. You make me go do something. You know, I, I have no idea. Like, right. who knows? Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, you always think. You know, so that so absolutely. You know, the 
you know, you think about this, and I think about this when I coach flag football for the kids on my teams, and they're young, they're eight, six, seven, five. I say, we gather up at the end, and I, and, and I don't care if they remember a play or not, but I say, I want you, when we break this huddle, to go thank your parents right, right now. Because if you think your parents like sitting here in the rain watching you practice, you are out of your mind. Right, so right, go, th- go right, say thank you to them. Right. Because right. mom slogs you from practice to practice. They wipe your chin. They, they do all those things. And right. they're able to nurture, say, you know what? Ralph needs to go in a few basements to see that he needs to, in order to, in order to soar with the Eagles, he needs right, to visit right, a few right, basements. Right, exactly, exactly. And one thing my... You know, one thing my father used to say, and I say it to my son all the time, and I kind of coined it a little different. He didn't exactly say it this way. I think I said it a little bit better, but he gave me the... But anyhow, he, my father told me when I was younger, he goes, you're going to where I've been, so don't reinvent the way. Right? You're going to where I've been, so don't reinvent the way. And that stuck with me. So I say that to my son. So hopefully he can say it to his son. Yeah. And then his son will say, well, me, the grandpa, was kind of cool or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, I don't know. So, Trying hey, to keep the legacy. Ralph Fajak coming to you live from Rise Pies in Boardman, Ohio. And we've got a lot of great content. We started off with, uh, you know, paying some homage to Gary Vaynerchuk, talking about the Wood Store ROI of your mom. Make sure that you're out there uh, celebrating all the moms that are in, and influencers that are in your life. Holly, thanks for dropping by. John, thanks for dropping by. John Pogatch is a speaker at Do You Live 2017. Oh, okay. I'll um, see him. I'll be. I'm gonna go see him. You're, you're there, man. Yeah. You're on the docket. John is a fantastic marketer, human being, and uh, but marketing professional. Been recognized nationally as one of the top 35 under under uh, 35s in the world of marketing. Just got back from speaking at a huge national conference. Uh, in in California in Silicon Valley uh, at Marketo's Na- Marketing National Summit, so it's really uh, exciting that we got a guy like that living here in Youngstown, speaking at one of the largest conferences in the country. The big Kahuna, and then big um, Kahuna. you know, yeah, Eddie Maransky dropped Maransky, making a yeah, cam- cameo, cameo appearance. Cameo, cameo. I think Wait. he combed his hair. <laughs> so <laughs> so this, this is exciting. So we um, so we just get into oh, yeah gosh. at Rise Pies, Boardman, Ohio get the opportunity to drop on there by. goes Eddie there goes the cameo so maybe we'll be able to he get combed him his hair he combed his hair <laughs> so a lot of ties here uh, yeah. first of all Eddie's Eddie and I are neighbors really? so we yeah so at the end of the drive you blaming hoops I mean though you're a hoop guy no you see the size of that guy a, yeah, I, I pick and choose on. my battles okay, these days. okay okay so Eddie good. will come to, you know Eddie will be walking the dogs past my house and we'll stop and we'll talk Cavaliers basketball or Indians baseball hey, and all hey, that hey. sort of thing yeah, come on in, come on in. So oh, there he is. Come on in. Here we go. Eddie, good to see you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, big cameo appearance today from Eddie Moransky dropping doing? on by. It's great to see you, you too, Dennis. in the restaurant, not at the end of the driveway. Yeah, chasing my three dogs. Dennis <laughs> is my neighbor, so yeah. he sees me uh, chasing my three And he just told dogs. me he wants to challenge you in basketball. Oh, yeah. Now, that's, yeah. that's a made-up story. <laughs> oh, you know what? He doesn't let me live down. So, and I'm usually chasing my three kids around. So it's good to see you here. You too. Uh, and thanks for giving us a spot in your restaurant. Yeah. Well, you know, the New York Times has Pete Wells, that you know, is really the voice of New York food. Right. Youngstown has Ralph Bajak. There you go. That's right. Ralph Bajak right. dresses sassy, your restaurant. Right? That's right. The, 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 the Stay Sassy White Town. So that is true. And we'll talk about that a yeah. little bit later. I, I don't know. If, if you follow this guy on social media, I don't know if he's eaten a meal in his house outside of takeout in the past. No, I turned my kitchen into a game room. Yeah. Yeah, so you know when people get, uh, people get utilities yeah. and all that? I took it out, put a jacuzzi in there. I put a foosball table. That's in my kitchen. Yeah, that's prime real estate. That's prime real estate. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm just teasing. So we're going we're gonna to talk about a few topics today while we got Eddie here for a minute. Let's just jump in here. Eddie reminds me, we were going to talk about Cavs basketball a little bit today. Yeah. And a few years ago, I wrote a blog about why LeBron James is never coming back to Young <laughs> or to Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, very, and, very. And it was very well thought out. I just disagreed yeah, with it. That's, that's it's right. it's <laughs> been one of my most... Uh, well-read blogs that I've, I've actually ever written. And, and oddly enough, most of that traffic comes from Pinterest. But Eddie finally reminds me on a pretty regular basis that I wrote that and that right. he did come back. Thank right. God that he did. Right, right. Well, and, I'm reading. It's funny you mention that. I'm just starting to read the book about his return that uh, Brian Windhorst and Dave McMenamin wrote. Sure. And it, it was about that whole process. And it's easy now. I mean, it's been so great since he came right. back and such a great story. But at the time, it was far from a sure thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Miami yeah. had a really good structure built up. Everybody figured Pat Riley would uh, 
you know, change things like they needed to to win more titles. And it was a, a big surprise to a lot of people. So I, I don't think you were out of line in saying that, Dennis. But, no, I'm out of line a lot of know, times. The, the Ohioan in me just wanted to believe he was. And I think, hey, Dennis, but I think, honestly, when we were saying about mothers and all that stuff, I think LeBron James's wife and mother had an intricate part in getting oh, him no back. Oh, no question. Here. No question. So I think that's the power of o- ROI. So we have to thank LeBron's wife to have LeBron come back here to get us titles. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. That's the ROI. So Andrea jumps on your feed, but she misses the Duyo feed. But Tom, thanks for dropping she by. She likes me better. Ryan Grace, she a great basketball coach, a, by the way, out of Canton, Ohio, dropping a by a college line. friend of okay. mine. Which, which this one here is what's with him. Yeah. Okay, this great. one here is so, just cameo. And, Eddie, so. since, well, anyway, let's, let's talk a little bit of basketball. So here's my take right now is that last year, coming through the finals, Andrew Bogut gets hurt, changes the complete complexion, and you guys may disagree with this, but can, changes the complete complexion of the finals, opens up the entire key to LeBron James being able to go to the 10 whenever he wants, um, and absolutely, obviously, dominating from a stat line perspective, um, you know, in the NBA Finals last year. Uh, thank God we don't have to give uh, Andrew Iguodala a MVP for holding LeBron to a triple double yeah. again, right? <laughs> right, right? Which was amazing. Because right. if he didn't right. guard him, he averaged yeah. 60 games. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. So Hitting coming wide open threes, yeah. Are we on a collision course right now for Golden State and the Cavaliers in the finals? Is it a foregone conclusion? Do we have to watch these other series? Oh, well, I mean, you still watch it because it's fun to watch basketball. But just, I, I like looking, I don't really bet it, but I, I like looking at the Vegas odds. Okay. Right now, the Cavs are 1 to 6 to win the East, and the Warriors are 1 to 10 to win the West. So I think the whole... Yeah. I mean, people don't lie with their wallets. So I think that the public agrees that uh, those two teams are going to meet. And I think you make a great point about Bogut. If you remember Game 7, Anderson Berejao was in for the Warriors for like 10 minutes and right. looked like he was point shaving. Maybe he was. Maybe he was helping the Cavs. <laughs> but if you put Bogut in for those minutes, I mean, it's a game of inches. They won by four. Who knows what, if that could have swung that or not. Bogut right. was a key rim protector for them. Right. You know, my, my biggest pain of watching the Cavaliers play kind of reminds me of going, going back to Shaquille's days where the officials can't really understand how to officiate with a guy like LeBron James, physicality, athleticism, and size. And he just gets beat up and banged around non-stop when he's going to the rack and they don't really they let him play a they, little bit. They, they, they don't call the, they call the game yeah. differently right. for LeBron James because of his size which right. is painful oh, yeah. to see and you don't notice the impact as much on him because he's so strong so part right. of it is the refs right. You right. know, calling it differently. Part of it is them just not noticing it as much as they would on right. you know regular players. So are we all in agreement it's Boston in the Cavs? Uh, I'm not Give me three to one. I, I, I'd three say seventy-five percent okay. Boston. Ed Kernan, thanks for dropping by. Yeah. Mark Carney, thanks for dropping by as well. Um, you know what? I like I like Isaiah Thomas, the the second coming. You know, like you get confused if you were watching basketball back in the eighties. Um, I, this I, Isaiah Thomas out of the University of Washington. Uh, he's an amazing player. It's painful sometimes, though, to see a point guard averaging 30 points a game because you wonder about the distribution for the other guys on the on the court. But I like Boston to come out, play the Cavaliers tough. I'm going to predict that one's going to go about five games. The Cavs are going to take care of them. Um, and I like Golden State. There's no there's no like right. crazy predictions. Um, San Antonio, I don't I don't know if they're going to get by or not. But you know, I like the Cavs obviously and the Warriors in the finals. That's, yeah. that's okay. big money okay. too. That's big money for the networks. And you know, and I, I'm gonna, I'm going to probably start it again this year. And Eddie knows what I'm going to say, but I'm going to start it again this year. I guarantee wins. I guarantee wins, and how I do that is I come to Rise Pod. <laughs> Am I right? Which is a great and, transition. And, 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 by so the way. timing for you to mention that because we haven't needed to do it the first two runs, but starting in the conference finals, there you every go. day of the game we are going to offer a three ten cheese pizza in honor of the Warriors blowing a three one lead last year. There you I love go. It. In honor of Ralph Fajer. So we're, that, <laughs> that'll be the special then, we run. And on, then also, uh, on game days. I'm unveiling my new. My new Stay Sassy stickers, okay, I'm unveiling them. And Eddie, is it safe to say if they come in and do that, we can give them a sticker? Absolutely, yes. All right. So you I'm heard coming. it here, 310 I'm getting 150 pizzas. Beautiful. Pizzas. And we get, a ton of, we get a ton of replays, so we'll make sure we'll post that in the, in the, uh, the post-show yeah. notes, and we'll tag uh, Rise Pies, and thanks for giving us a, a home again today. Ralph Fajak, Eddie Moransky. So, Eddie, 
if we could just for a minute, since we got you here, talk a little bit about Rise Pies, the inception, uh, and then you you have expanded well beyond uh, the borders of Youngstown, Ohio, yeah. right? Well, that was always the idea. We're 15 now. 15, okay. And the idea was, because, you know, we have such great pizza here in Youngstown, was to, you know, start it here and have a base here and really take it national. And, you know, through a lot, uh, we also operate some Annie and Pretzel stores. So through right. those, we had a lot of contacts with sure. malls and had a lot of opportunities to bring Rice Pies into malls. So we've done that. So you have distribution channel already set right. up that it's... Landlords that said, hey, it. Right. We're, you know, right. we're, we're out here. You're in, no uh, risk. South Haven, Mississippi, we have a Tanger Outlet Mall. Come on in. Right. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Atlanta, Georgia. You know, a, a bunch of them like that. And it's been a great chance to bring our great pizza um, around the country and uh, you know malls are you know going through a little bit of a transition phase right now moving more to the outlets yep. and uh, you know we're starting more locations like this than you know your typical outdoor uh, beautiful strip centers like yeah. the shops at Boardman Park. Yeah. So, my sister just said Eddie, come to Canton. Bring some Youngstown my way. Stay That's tuned. my we're stay. Hope, don't. We're hoping her nickname's uh, Doni. Doni, stay tuned. We, you know, we've spent the last few, uh, there you you know, go. few years. We've expanded around the country, and now we're going to kind of build around Regional. our tent poles. So you know, around here, you know, Cleveland, Akron, maybe Canton, Pittsburgh, and then down Central Florida, we have a nice. You're going to like expand your hub. Well, no, yeah, expand kind your hub. And, 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 and yeah, and, and this is a horrible joke. No, no pun intended, <laughs> right? But secret sauce behind this, and, and a lot of times I think from a marketing perspective, we get so caught up in the activation. But it sounds like you do a lot of research in the markets that you're heading. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know, like you just have to look at like the kind of people that enjoy pizza in this format. And what we've noticed is, you know, you get a lot of young families. You get a lot of right. college and high school students and stuff like that. Now, you, you want to appeal to everybody ultimately. Right. But, you know, when you're concentrating on those areas, you have to look at those demographics. So eventually we're going to try a college. Hopefully, you know, maybe one near here in Florida. And How about USC? I'll go out there and oh, help yeah. Yeah. I'll help <laughs> you. Yeah, I'll there. be a manager out there. Uh, free. So you look for those demographics there just to set yourself up for success. And, you know, you look for a good dinner crowd because pizza inherently, I mean, we still do a nice lunch business too, but pizza inherently is a little more of a dinner food. Right. So you make sure you have that nighttime And it's nice you can you. customize it. Oh, you know, yeah. You, you know, put a little extra mozzarella. Put an extra... Well, wait. Well, Before tell them conceptually about, conceptually about building your own pizza. That, right. that would be helpful right. well, as to well. To be honest, Dennis, for marketing, that's been the biggest challenge so far because it's such a change to the paradigm of pizza to do right. it in this fashion, like to build it on the spot. A lot of restaurants have this oven, but it's a sit-down restaurant, right. so they have 10 minutes to cook it. So to, to drill it into people that this is the format and you could get a fresh custom pizza. Right, to right, right, right. And it's hard for people. That's to, been the marketing challenge. It's hard for people to make decisions mm -hmm. about food, about clothes, yeah. about anything. And people are very. Wall shoe, Ryan Gracie. I'm with you, brother. That's a <laughs> hey, wait, form of college. Earlier, oh, yeah. <laughs> earlier you said this is like uh, no joking or this is going to be a joke. Or I didn't hear you say any joke. Earlier you said, well, I'm no, not. The secret sauce. That the was secret the, the sauce. Secret yeah. sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Was it's that just the joke? That horrible <laughs> pizza that, joke. Yeah, they say that on Shark Tank all the time. Yeah, so that's you're, right. So you're you're dead to me, Dennis. Dennis there's a big education joke. process, but we're getting there. Yes. And and um, your branding's wonderful. Like you know, I look at it from afar, and you know, you've you've got that all in sync. How'd you come up with the the concept or the name of Rise Pies, and then? Obviously, your consistency here is amazing. Talk a little bit about your branding. Well, there was a um, there's a great marketing company out of St. Louis. That, it was called Twist Marketing. They've since merged with a, a company called 10X. My sister had uh, interned for them in college. They actually uh, came up with the Lake Club Lake Club name and logo. So we knew wow, they'd done good, good work. So we met with uh, we met with them and challenged them to come up with some potential names for this pizza concept. And one that they gave us that we liked the most was Rise. Rise Handcrafted Pizza, which we all like too, but unfortunately it was trademarked already. Oh, really? So we kind of put our heads together as to, we love the name, how, what kind of twist could we put on it to still get the trademark? And, and Rise <laughs> Rise is what we came up with. I so, would have put a Z instead yeah. of the S. Rise. You yeah. could have done it, right? I, I think, oh, you know what? I think that was actually taken too. Oh, so you'd be amazed with the U.S. Oh, wow. trademarks because we Two wanted Zs. something since we were going national. <laughs> we didn't know if we would franchise long term. We had that something we could trademark. So Rise Pies is what we came up with. And, you know, it. handcrafted pizza is our tag line and you know we've messed around with that a little bit we, we love the word handcrafted but like i said with educating people on the concept do you call it quick crafted do you call it something else like that but rise yeah. pies is our core and then right. did you add salads and meatballs to your logo make it oh, and your meatballs. Too, so so those are the, the questions you asked but rise pies being our core brand we've been very happy with it. gotcha and so as you as you go down this path and tremendous success of expanding the 15 locations and sounds like you've got you know plans for expansion what were some of the surprises that came along with this business because obviously you know not every day you wake up 
is it a yeah. perfect rosy place scenario? So have you had any challenges along the way? Yeah, what I just mentioned is that I figured between lunch and dinner, I figured it'd be an even split. Pizza being more of a dinner food was a little bit of a surprise for us there. So that was um, a little bit of an adjustment. And um, I would say just the, the education process, like I, like I mentioned before with, with people getting to know it. Because a lot of the times in malls, you're only a function of how far, how big your line. There's a certain point where if your line's more than 10 people, people aren't getting in and in a mall. Right. Right? Especially right. in food courts because they don't have that kind of time. So the speed of it and the education of it, of telling people what it is. So you see here in Boardman, with the way we, we structure our pricing, we have a cheese pizza, a one topping, and a Big Ed, my, I've named after my dad, which is unlimited toppings. So pierogies that, on there? But, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put pierogies on there. Yeah. 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 So that works well here, because you know, people come, our line here is much steadier, <laughs> but in malls, when you really get crushed for a lunchtime, we're playing with an idea there now to go a four ninety nine cheese pizza and a dollar a topping, just wow. to move the line quicker. Yeah. So there's those questions you ask, and every store really is different. So that's been the biggest challenge. I thought it would be more of a one size fits all as far as marketing menu and stuff like that but it's been store by store but that's been a fun challenge too yeah like yogi bear says nobody goes there anymore because it's always it's too, too crowded. crowded exactly right. yeah it's too crowded Mall's nobody goes there anymore. right <laughs> one more time what's the special you're running uh when the for once the Cavs conference finals start which would be i Tuesday believe wednesday? next wednesday wednesday monday if the celtics win the night right. wednesday if they uh, right. if they don't tonight um every uh, game day uh, for uh, conference finals and hopefully NBA finals, we'll be offering a 310 cheese pizza. Normal price, $4.99. We'll be doing a 310 wow. cheese pizza in honor of the Warriors blowing a 3 1 lead for That's us awesome. last year. That's and, uh, awesome. and then toppings will be extra on top of that, and then salads, meatballs will be available too. Beautiful. A 310 cheese pizza. And have to get the meatballs. Yes. If you come at you have to get That's the Vernon, it, our show. Yeah. He sadly, couldn't be here today. But uh, he's over at his have restaurant. To get the meat That's balls. his uh, special recipe. Yeah. And we warm him up right and here. And a stay sassy white town sticker. I, I yeah. am and not going to lie. White so I will, from time to time, go indulge with this meatball and the ricotta cheese. Oh, and please. then I just go knock off the afternoon and sleep. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get a loaf of French bread. And we should have there. some cots back here in case <laughs> people want that's that's right. Exactly. That's right. One other thing. So uh, future rice pies. What's, it, what's, it, what's well, the ideal, what's the structure look for you? The next six months or so, and it's much neat because we opened 11 of them in less than a year. Wow. So, which was too much. Yeah, we, um, we, we pulled it off and they've been good, but um, well, we wouldn't want to, um, it, was, it was tough. So, um, yeah. we're taking about six months to catch our breath. And then this fall, we, um, we're looking at a, um, another mall location up in Michigan. And um, early next year, um, we're again looking to expand more around the Northeast Ohio and Central Florida area. So and that next wave of them will be. And, and you know, and, and they're Michigan. They're Michigan. Yeah, I mean, we're already in one, uh, yeah, one mall yeah. up there, and yeah. Hey man, play to your strengths. Yeah. Eddie, I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, you you giving us a home here today for the for the Do You Live Happy Marketing you, Show. Yeah. And um, you know, here's the other thing. Like, so you, you don't recognize this. But Eddie's a very humble. Very young, successful entrepreneur, but you know he came back to Youngstown, Ohio. Like did, you were yeah. in Cleveland. I was, yeah. I was there for uh, about two and a half years, and um, I, I always, deep down, I knew I wanted to come back and join my dad eventually because I'm just so proud of all the great. Even in addition to him being my dad, I'm so proud of the great work he's done here and all the jobs he's created. So I knew that I'd want to do that eventually, but I thought that might be closer to you know being 35 or 40 yeah. and starting old. a family. But I ended up old. doing it earlier than I thought. Because I just kind of felt that pull, yeah. and um, I just thought we could do some great things here, and I've been very happy with it. I met yeah. my future wife here, and just couldn't be happier. My fu funny thing, real quick before you go on, I lived in LA and I moved back here too. I had the, it's it's like the poltergeist; they keep pulling us back <laughs> here. But it was because of my father. My father turned, got ill, ninety three. I moved back from Los Angeles. I was out here. But anyhow, funny story, Nate. I, I don't know if Eddie knows this or not, but my father went to St. Cyril Methodius. Yeah, okay, which is so, where my wedding is, actually. I'm excited. Yeah, I love it. I'm love it kidding. down there. That's love great. it down there. Anyhow, my father, when he would see Eddie's father, Ed, he would go, you know what? I thought I had the biggest Slovak in Youngstown, but I have to give it to you. And you're bigger <laughs> oh, than my yeah. son. So that was, a, that was a fun one. And every time when he'd see your father, he'd be like, I have the second biggest Slovak in Youngstown. Your dad's the biggest Slovak in Youngstown. So yeah, that was Saint a Cyril was very yeah, yeah. Did both my grandparents and my dad growing up. All the old so. hunky Slovaks no, I, from the south side, all that's their yeah. whole thing. Yeah, no doubt. And I mean, that's that, a cool thing about Youngstown because you, you still have, even today, these little ethnic enclaves. Right, right. The Italians, the Slovaks, the right. Greeks, all very uh, very proud Tight. of their heritage yeah, and yeah, right. keep it up. It is. It was um, it was the tie that kept me going. You know, I lived out of the area. I grew up in Louisville, very obviously ethnic Italian community. 
the one uh, Irish kid that we did grow up with was half Italian. Um, so, and he made them all yeah. Italian, probably. Right. Changed his name. And uh, you Round know, up. I tell Todd, I tell Todd <laughs> yeah. Frank all the time. Like I read the I read the Vindicator, especially when they went online. Um, I read that everywhere. I I always you know wherever I lived, and I knew I was coming back to this area. Um, because there is there is a nice pulse. There's a there's a magnetic tie to it. And your family has been uh, just wonderful and gracious to to me and my wife. Um, you know, great since people. the day that we Absolutely moved back. You're, you're actually, your mom. I love um, teasing his mom. Your mom called called us up and said we we know of a I know of a great house on Indian Trail in Poland, Ohio that um, that you should go take a look at. And um, you know, so that I mean, that's the the the, the, the ties. We just had um, our. Uh, First communion for our, our oldest child at the, at the Lake Club on on Saturday. Oh, great! Right. Okay, best. and it's just an area that you know again continues to have a common denominator through our entire family. What we're going to talk a little bit today, once we move on to this, is um, the Southwoods concert for the Valley, oh, which is huge, oh, exciting news. Oh, I thought that might be yeah. up your alley there. Well. <laughs> yeah. If I get, I'm going to get on stage again, trust me, I'm getting on stage again. But here's the funny thing: so if you're ever driving to work at eight o'clock in the morning. And you get uh, you get a an emergency call from Ralph Fajak saying I've been banned from Facebook. What do I do? Oh man, so I that's an interesting. Happened. No, I we know, know what I, you are did. Are they watching Facebook? Watch is Zuckerberg watching this right now? You're he the was the best in, ambassador of Facebook I've ever I seen. Agree. I agree. Here's, here's what happened. Here's I think By the way, happened. he was in Youngstown. I know. Did you read the story? Yeah, New Falls. And how did he? How did he overlook this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have I have a Facebook prospectus before it even came out public. That would have been so nice if he signed it for me, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> and I would have framed it. No, I think what happened was I put a video. I was I put a video on. I, I was in the car and I had Pitbull playing in the background, and I didn't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. And I didn't mention it. And what I did was I hashtag Pitbull, and I think he's called Pitbull for a reason. I think he had a little pissed or something. But anyhow. So then I put an email back to Facebook, and I says, I don't understand why this happened. And thank you for your questions. We cannot handle that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I felt like I just lost a, like a child in a, in a boating <laughs> yeah. accident. I'm like, what do I do now? So that's why I called Dennis. So then I put another one out, and I said, listen, please, Facebook. I, the picture that I took of Pitbull, I went to see him in Las Vegas. So it's my own recording. I know I'm good at doing things like recording stuff, but that's not his proprietary thing. I took a film of it. <laughs> so I put a uh, put on Facebook, and so I wrote in there, I said, this is my own proprietary video of Facebook in Vegas. <laughs> so, so then I said, period. Then I said, so in other words, if I go to any concerts or I see any sporting events or I see anything, I, I can't take a clip of it and put it on Facebook because it's a violation. Oh, wow. And... An hour and a half later, I was put back on. So, so he was yeah. reinstated. I was reinstated. Wow. I was out of Facebook jail in about I was at six hours, I think. Oh, the man. food was horrible. Longest six Facebook hours of your life. So huh? I was going to say, I think you would give up your car before you gave up Facebook. He, I might give up an arm. Yeah. He, was in the, <laughs> yeah. he was in the Facebook drunk tank. Yeah, yeah I was in the drunk tank. Yeah. To go bail him out. Yeah, know, and like, I called Dennis. I'm like, oh my gosh, who do I call? Do I call my priest? Or do I call Dennis? <laughs> I'm calling Dennis. <laughs> No, but that's what it was, I think, and it was like, so, and I think because they hired those three thousand people, and maybe for some reason that well, hashtag Pitbull come up or something. Well, you know, so Facebook has a couple of inherent issues, and you're welcome to stick around and, and talk marketing as long as you want. <laughs> but obviously, with some of the recent live um, things that have you know played out on Facebook and, Cleveland, and obviously the, the, the biggest, the, biggest yeah, yeah. started, and then the so Facebook already had an army of people that actually kind of sit, sit around, censor, and monitor live activities and what they can they can watch, and especially with the technology of the way that they could feed it. But they just recently hired another three thousand people, and I think it now comes to seventy five hundred people total that sit yeah. and monitor on a day to day basis live feeds that are going on to make sure that it obviously is nothing from a criminal aspect because there's been more than one uh, incident taking place there. So it is something that... That's know, a whole nother show. It that really a is. a whole nother show. Um, I mean, you know, is it right or wrong? It really is. And then the second thing that they just recently did, um, because they have a huge fake news problem as well, and it kind of goes back to the election season, um, is that they... <laughs> wrong. As crazy as Trump is, I still I find the wrong thing. It's funny. funny. Yeah, it's funny. It's, right? I'm no puppet. Yeah. Yeah. So they had... Wrong. They had in that um, they, they they just recently launched something into the Facebook feed that if you have a website that has a ton of pop-ups coming on 
to the screen and it gives a bad experience. They're actually able to read advance into the future of what that experience looks like and they'll start to penalize you on Facebook and not show you that documentation. Because right. what, what Google did about six months ago is that if you notice when you go to a website, you have a pop-up offer. And if it's not native to that website and that platform, then they start to penalize those websites for organic reach as well. This is the nerdy side of marketing, the stuff that I pay attention to. But anyway, I love that's your the... pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you have a, 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 you know a lot more about it than I do. But I don't. I think you have a lot of issues where the technology. I don't know if the logistics and the legality is legality. Has caught up with the technology, right. and I don't right. know if these right. companies fully know how to manage it yet. Right. You know, and if they could look into the future that way. Give us six numbers for the lottery. Right? Yeah. Before it's drawn tonight. Well, at, at what point do you start then to get into the conversation about um, there was a movie with like a police state that they were able to go out and send the the, the, the police out before the crime was Minority actually committed. Report, right? Minority yeah. report. And now we have in, introduced intelligent, smart pro products into our house with our artificial intelligence that certain trigger words trigger these things to come on and they might be on without us even knowing that they're on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty cool. You know, I don't know. I think it's cool. Yeah, we just have to make some tweaks to figure out how to I, use the yeah. channel. And, and, and yeah. I think that the, even from the other aspect of this is that, you know, we obviously have your buy-in to do this today, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But you have this whole area of, of the world that is not even being addressed yet from a brand perspective that I can go to Cavaliers game. <laughs> Um, you know, in, you know, hopefully here in the finals, even the next round of the playoffs and Facebook Live it, and what's the policy based upon that? That's what I'm saying. Should you get banned? That's what I'm saying. They banned me for something I filmed Pitbull, I think. Well, to Eddie's point, like they're... I think they call Pitbull. I think it's Pitbull. They they are ahead of... They're ahead... The technology is ahead right. of, of the policy. Right. No, I agree. And, and then the legality, legality, like you said, too, that's the important thing, too. Matt, thanks for joining Alda, th Ida, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Get some over here. Denise. Yeah, we've got people. Bergen. Oh, Bergen. Bergen, our neighbor in Niles. From yes. One Hot Cookie. She yes, excellent. One Hot Cookie. Also, to let you know. B, what are you doing on Ralph's feet? I hope for Bergen sake? You should be on the I'm doo it, I'm bringing these to One Hot Cookie, too. She has these, and so everybody's getting these. We serve chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and I'm getting 14 these. out of Bergen. our 15 right. Rise locations. The only one we don't is Niles, because Bergen is our neighbor, and we have too much respect for her. Yeah. To serve cookies well, and compete. That's there great to go. know. <laughs> there you go. We just did a, an Instagram contest with One Hot Cookie. Uh, we gave away a box of um, a, 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 a box cookies. of cookies, and Bergen is actually speaking at Duyo Live oh, okay. on August third. We should put cookies on a rice pies pizza and cook it and see what happens. That'd be cool. I'd eat it. <laughs> you don't have to convince me. <laughs> there we go. I, I bring the beer. <laughs> No, Bergen, I'm going to bring over uh, All right. some of those, and everybody, you can get it at One Hot Cookie also for your cooking needs in Boardman and all over. But Rise Pies here for the uh, Cavs Pizzas. 310. 310, yes. All right. 420. 310. <laughs> <laughs> Although 420 would actually generate a lot of business. I'm a, of, that would, yeah. I'm a son of a cop. I don't know what that means. Right. So let's talk about the concert for the Valley. Oh, I love let's it. Get, let's get into the Pitbull conversation. Um, so the first thing that, you know, relating back, this is obviously a marketing show, and I, I, I tend to pull that in a lot. You know, the one thing that you have to, that I don't think a lot of people recognize about the over, overnight sensation that is Pitbull that has performed in, you know, 50 Mr. different Worldwide. countries. I've got some crazy statistics on Pitbull here, and maybe this isn't the one. 70, yeah, 70 million singles that have been sold, number one hits in 15 countries, 22 million. That's 22 million. How you doing on Twitter? I got like 800. <laughs> <laughs> Not 1,000, 800. 22 million followers on Twitter, 59 million followers on Facebook, and we're not even talking about Instagram. And with that critical mass, so last year we had a guy by the name of Joe Polizzi, and that's not Polizzi from the south side of Youngstown, Uncle Joe. This is a guy that's one of the top ten influencers in the world of marketing today. Come down and give our keynote speech at Do You Live last year. And he founded a conference called Content Marketing World. 4,000 people from around the world attend this in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and what Joe preaches in his content marketing genre is Content Inc., and it's you have to show up, produce interesting, compelling content on a consistent basis, build your audience as broad as you possibly can, right? 
And as you build that audience, then you can begin to monetize that. And Pitbull started on the Luther Campbell label, which if you guys don't remember who Luther Campbell is from the two live crew, the U, which, which right? Yeah. He's the bankroll of Miami football team back in the 80s. Yeah. Bankrolls of Miami football. <laughs> yeah. Very popular in, in the gentlemen's clubs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't and, even know what 420 is. How would I know? That? Right. <laughs> And so he has branched out over the course of the time that he started with the cornrows to now being in a three-piece suit, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305, of expanding that audience. And what he did is he took content, which was rap music, mm -hmm. he tilted it, put it on its side. Like a Latin? And he infused the Latin right. with the club, with the rap, and it just absolutely exploded. Phenomenal. And that is yep. the content genre that gave him the ability then to be be endorsed by billion dollar brands like by Bud Light, Kodak, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Dodge, Fiat. He then said, hey, you know what? I've got 50 million followers on Facebook right. that I can talk to. Why not launch a vodka brand? And of all ethnicities, which is the key. Yeah. I mean, you have the Hispanic it's, uh, demographic is huge. The, you know, the, the, the black, the white, et cetera, but you have Pitbull with the Latino and Latina market, which these big companies want to get into. And in a music scene that's so fractured today, he's very smart. He collaborates with a lot of different artists. Right, There's, right. You know, Kesha and I mean, all, all his, all his hit, hit songs, Neo, you know, all his hit songs are with another big name. Beyonce. And um, he kind of has achieved this great balance of, you know, rap, um, Latino music, you know, electronic, all that stuff, all kind of melded together. And, you know, I think he's the best example today of somebody with a mass appeal. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the, as I said, the music scene gets more fractured and fractured. I it agree. is. And we're, we're, we, that's been the philosophy behind my, as the way that I've built Do You Alive is, is based upon the win-win. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and essentially, if I got a guy like, like Ralph, who I identify as a social media influencer in the community, and I can get him to my conference, Thank you, Dennis. VIP ticket, and then in return, I get that audience. We come to Rise Pies today. Hopefully, we're going to bring you some value with the special that you're running. And then in return, out of that, we get some of your audience as well. We're doing that with Burger with One Hot Cookie. And this is just doing it on a mega, right. multi-international level, right? Right, that we right. Can... And then Southwood's bringing Pitbull. The, now, the Lionel Richie concert. Did you go to the Lionel Richie last year? I unfortunately was not at oh, the... Oh, my goodness. I, I, was... I think this is going to be dynamite with Pitbull. I think it, it was unbelievable. You had the whole floor, Southwoods, dancing, cheering, laughing. It was like a party of 7,000 people. Oh, yeah. And I, I commend you and your father oh, and everybody in Southwoods and all the people at Southwoods. And well, and, I, and Lionel Richie was, was excellent and he's you know one of the greatest right. of all time. I loved him. And, and, and Pitbull's going to be fun, too, because, you know, maybe you reach a little bit of a different, right. a little, a little bit of a younger audience. Tickets still available, but... You, you find a different audience, and I, and I think that, too, when it looks to mega stars in this area that have played, honestly, I mean, I don't know if we've had anybody, like, you, if yeah. you look at the tour... Other than Elton John, maybe, I think he might right. be up there. Yeah. In, I between, think he will. in between, in between the dates... The tour that he's on right now and will be going on in the fall is absolutely amazing. Yeah, right. The fact that we've got this guy coming in, you know, I give all the credit in the world to um, Ed Moransky Sr., yep. um, Southwoods, and the expansion of the Lake Club and all the things that he's done. Eric Ryan, um, it's, Eric it's, Ryan, yeah, it's JAC. A, it's a huge inspiration to, you know, to the, to the rest of us that are running around in the community. But then Eric Ryan right. from JAC Live as well, to what he, where he started right. out Dynamic. to what the Cavelli is and the concerts that continually to come through there and the level and the quality. Um, again, huge inspiration. Um, that is, uh, it's amazing. It's yeah. just amazing. I would defy anybody to find a mid-sized arena anywhere else in the country that Can't has pulled it. better names than the Can't Cavalli it. Center. It competes with like NBA and NHL right. arenas for some of these acts. I go to everything. I, Kelsey and uh, Colin down there at the um, Cavalli Center, C Cavalli Center. I have the PSL, so I get my seats. I do it every year, so you get first dibs on tickets and all that stuff. Fantastic, you know, uh, down there, the girls down there, and uh, the Cavalli Center, like you said, it's just, you know. It, 
overflow to downtown Youngstown to the restaurants to the you know everything else. The supply chain, right? The supply right. chain is just right. amazing about all the people yeah. that end up benefiting from an event. You know, we talked about LeBron James earlier when he left Cleveland. The, all the people that worked in restaurants and bars, how bad that they suffered. Well, the alternative optimistic effect of that it's like bringing thirty million a day or something right. or something so, like that. So now you bring Pitbull to town, and you will have people staying in our right. hotels, spending money in the restaurants. Um, it's it's just it's a tremendous win. So here's one thing that you guys will appreciate because both of you guys know what, what, what the value of hard work and building brands. But here's five ways to build a brand like Pitbull, even if it's um, in your own backyard. I right? want to. It wanna doesn't get, have to be an international superstar. But number one, ready? I know mine. And I want to go six. And I, I, I'll give you a six. I want to hear opinions on this too, right? Okay. So be a tireless worker. Be prepared to hustle. Pitbull apparently sleeps four hours a night and is just hustling all the time. I heard a quote from him once that was interesting. He said, "Like, like success in music is like, like ten percent talent and ninety percent work." Kind of the old Thomas Edison right, quote: right. "Genius is ninety-eight percent uh, perspiration and two percent inspiration." So yeah, I think Pitbull, he's taking the business side of it very seriously. I think from when he, grew, I mean, it's 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 how he grew up. He grew up. I mean, you know. You know, we have kids in this country that if they have to get off the couch to get the remote, they're not going to change well, the channel. Well, the variety... The, <laughs> I mean, this guy, uh, come uh, on. The, the, the variety article, or the, the, mag, the Vanity Fair article said that he grew up in the post-Miami Scarface, See, Miami, yeah, they, Miami yeah. Vice world of... That's the Miami that he grew up in. Right. So, uh, number two, see an opportunity and go for it. Makes yeah. sense to me. That's easy. Was any, were, are there... Uh, in, in this... In, the, in your arena... Uh, when you started to investigate this this genre of delivering pizza and this mechanism at this quality, what what did the opportunity look like for you? Well, you know, the, the restaurant business is very tough because I mean, mm -hmm. you've got very thin margins compared to you hear all the horror stories there. And, you know, we're still in our infancy. We're still working through it. But it just comes down to um, what you... Once you get your food costs, labor costs, things like that in line, and you're starting to pick sites, which is kind of the stage right now. We did these first 15. We've seen what sites work, what sites don't. And those are like hubs that so you can branch off yes. of those. So that's awesome. So as you go to that's a new you one, need to do. you try and you weigh the upside of it compared to the downside. So right. like if, say, you're looking at a location and um, the build-out might be a little bit more than you thought or the rent might be a little bit more than you thought. If you're wrong, the downside is that difference in the rent. But, right. if, but if you're right... And the up and um, the location is as great as you think it is. The upside's much more huge. than that. So yeah. it's just weighing those risks. And I think um, Pitbull's quote to see an opportunity and go for it. It just not, um, you have to just be ready when those right. locations. And it right. doesn't come without controversy as well, because in the rap community, there's a lot of a lot of purists that think that he sold out. And he and his response is truly rap. Though? Well, I mean, he's well, not here, truly here's what rap. was interesting about Pitbull's response to his critics is that yeah, he goes, I did I sell out. He goes, yeah, absolutely. I sold out Las Vegas. Yeah. I sold yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, what's it, yeah, yeah. It's what he wants to do. Like, I, I like what's what is selling out? Like, what I don't, is selling I don't, out? I don't you know, understand. Yeah, it the, the quote the quote that I saw that I heard the other day too was that you know, look, I, I've made it to the point where people want to take selfies with me in the street, and he goes, or get because, banned off of Facebook, or get banned <laughs> off of Facebook, and because of that, I have to live with the trolls as well. Right. That's fine. That comes right. with the territory. Rose, Rosie, my mother in law. Thank you. Hi, uh, Chris San Martino Th thank over you here for joining. See Mr. Chris on the bottom. Thanks for joining, Chris. I, who, what did somebody? What? I gotta get that. All right, so there let's go with the Chris next. Um, how to brand like Pitbull again? Diversify the portfolio. Oh, you right. talked about all the people that he's pulled in. So figure out where you've got some channel relationships. How do you diversify your product portfolio? Yeah. You've mm -hmm. got pizza, but you also have some amazing salads here. We as do, well. yeah, and that's Leo. I credit Leo Henry, one of our operations um, people. We were a couple months in. And we used to serve um, pre-packed salads. They were still very good. But um, Leo came in. He goes, hey, he goes, you got all these ingredients there. Just make Everybody loves salad. custom. Yeah. It just looks more fresh. Why don't we do build your own salads? And, and they've really taken off. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's still, um, pizza's still our primary uh, it, But product. the thing is, I, you know, not putting anybody in, in buckets, but, you know, usually the girls or the ladies or the women, they normally like a little bit more salad. Right, and it lets you and eat your guys, more. you know, <laughs> right. So this way you go, let's go to Rise Pies. And the girls will say, or the women will say, well, you know, I want a salad. So if I, so get, a, if I get a salad after this, what are you going to call me? Honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't let, don't let stay sassy for you. Okay, so first of all, people, yeah. this guy is a very successful investment banker for a very long time. And Not banker. Sorry. 
financial advisor. Thank we you. Do not like bankers. Sorry, I'm teasing. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But you know a little bit about diversification. And That's we, the we whole know, life. Right. That's your life. Yeah. Right. That's diversification your whole life. You don't want it. If somebody says to you, you have a chance to beat the Yankees, you have one pitch to do it, or nine innings. Nine innings represent diversification. Mm-hmm. You, if you're ball, or I should say ballsy enough, but I'm sorry. If you're gutsy enough, <laughs> <laughs> if you're gutsy enough to take one pitch and you hit it over the fence, you win. You can save time, but chances are, and probability is, you can have a hundred pitches and maybe do that twice. Yeah. By the way, not to get off topic, but it is it is a Jeter weekend in, in New York City in the Bronx this weekend. He's oh, a handsome yeah. dude. I'm so jealous. Michigan. Of him. He loves Michigan too. So he, so you I can you that. can support. That. I don't like I've him. Seen him I don't like him. Otherwise, anymore. it's Indians. But yeah. otherwise, you He's can so support. He's so handsome. Yes. How did, how did, Classy like, guy. I just like, like Tom him. Brady. Handsome guy. Good athlete. All the Michigan men. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. It is. Like, look at the guy sitting next to us. <laughs> so next, fourth fourth way to brand or be successful was content. Content is a derivative of every underlying thing where you activate it where you position it and in, in today's modern world look we're doing a facebook live show because it produces content i could take this i could download it i could transcribe it i could i could turn this into a digital guide with three guys sitting around talking about business um upload it back in the in into youtube you think about the content that you engage with and from a pitbull perspective 10 albums worth of musical or music wow. is a lot of content. There's a lot of people that have played in that. And then he's able to take that content and not just put it onto, think about this, not, you know, we talk album, but CD is, if, or, you know, is that a thing or a track? But you got iTunes downloads. You've got commercial activation. Jingle, so, commercial jingles. How, you right? know, you make, he makes so still call them jingles? a boatload of money off selling his, his music to Dr. Pepper to let them use it in the commercial. He gets hired to do performances. So that content can play in a lot of different aspects, yeah. and you have to find One it. One thing I've noticed with him, how many of his songs are staples now at sporting events? Right. I don't think that's an accent. I think he makes a lot right. of songs right. with that in mind that it could have that right. application. Right. And that's his diversification the of the music. What a beautiful way. Wouldn't we all like to license something, that product, to be able to sit back and leverage my content? And that's fine. And then I, I obviously... This. It's gonna be. Season. It's gonna be big. That's gonna <laughs> no, be real big. No, yeah, I'm just um, having fun. By the way, we can get those into the Do You Live swag bags. We got like 400, 600 people coming. Can you call me Swaggy P <laughs> <laughs> or Swaggy R. <laughs> hey, swaggy I'm just gonna R. get that in front of the can't people. Shoot, can't you, sing. You do whatever you want. You okay, I can't shoot. Can't sing. You know. So. And, and last but not least, I see Beth Hawks joined. I went to grade school with her in Campfield. Oh, I was She wondering. was Beth Banana yeah. back then, but I bet. Beth Banana? Yeah, Banano. Banano, yeah. okay. Banano, okay. Beth's a rock star. She is actually a, br- a Do You Live breakout session leader as well, talking on uh, inbound marketing strategies. So you create interesting, compelling content. Instead of me having to call you all the time, you actually find it interesting enough to come see me. Oh, and Matt DiLoretto on my side, New York Yankee lover, loves the Yankees. His mother passed away or whatever. But believe it or not, Mickey Mantle asked her out on a date when Mickey Mantle played for the New York Yankees. I'd go out on a date wow. with Mickey Mantle. Yeah, I would go out on a date with Mickey Mantle. <laughs> Matty D, yeah. love you, brother. So, Kayla, my true, son's boy. True story. Eddie, I, I know that both of you guys, you know, just from following you on social media, have some pretty amazing um, sports experiences. One of, my, one of the tops of my food chain is that I have a personal friend of mine that I grew up with, north side of Youngstown, um, who is a director of PR for the New York Yankees. So when I lived in Manhattan... I actually watched a, a game from the press box at Yankee Stadium wow. and got to meet Bob Shepard in the old stadium. The voice wow. of God, oh, he was right. And I just said, Bob, you could just, Mr. Shepard, it was Mr. Shepard, can you just please say my name one time? That would be like, I didn't record it, like, but. Didn't have the recording material. Do you know that Jeter, uh, he passed away, I think, like 10 years ago. Jeter insisted that um, they use a recording of Bob Shepard saying, uh, his number and name until, it, it, until it, he when retired. he came up yes. the bat in the in the yeah that's amazing. Wow. So the last one is this: is that as you build your content, you're diversified, you're building this audience, and as you build these raving fans like like um, Pitbull has to the 50 million followers on on Facebook and the 100 millions of followers that come to the website and subscribe, he's able to monetize that, and that's what it comes back down to. Brands in this day and age look at advertising from the perspective that they're going to put out ads and people are going to come by but the more fans that you can build on your social media platforms to your apps to your email list then you can figure out different ways you know like here's you know a prime example as you have these 15 stores and you expand this brand 
and it becomes this just huge following. Maybe you've already thought about the cookbooks that can follow oh, and yeah. the wares that could go along with it, and that's what they're and doing. catering and stuff like that. Exactly. And honestly, Dennis, that's been part of the challenge because when you're in a mall, you're kind of paying for your foot traffic right. already. It's right. a different structure. You know, a lot of people, as great as our, I think our pizza is, they're not going to the mall just to go to Rise Pies. You're going for five right. different things. Whereas here, it, it is a true traditional marketing right. challenge. Right. You're so coming here you for have a year. Have, you have to have two different strategies. And, mar- and malls, all you can really do is market around the mall to other employees and stuff like that. Whereas here, you got to be in, uh, you know, do some print, do some direct mail, maybe a little right. radio, stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it's like I said, it's a store by store basis on how you market. Yeah, and that's good. Not one size shoe fits all mentality because mm-hmm. um, that was it. The five points. We have five points, right? Five points that for was Pitbull. A, that was five. You got you got I a couple to add. Yeah, these, been, no, wait, time I've out. I'm chomping at the bit. These are the stay sassy. These are the sassy bonus. Sassy bonus, bonus marketing material in okay. this brain that sometimes comes out and people can understand it. Majority of the time, they think I'm nuts, but that's okay. Number six is dancers. <laughs> his dancers I didn't see him I didn't know that I went to see him in Las Vegas I didn't even know there was dancers there my girlfriend said to me oh my gosh I should say my fiance Veronica yeah, Williams my fiance Veronica <laughs> yeah, Williams you I love you I got show. trouble yeah. there she just came out key anyhow my fiance Veronica Williams which I love dearly anyhow we were in Vegas and we went with a couple people and um, the show was going on and Ronnie goes, oh my goodness, those girls are such good dancers. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, geez, oh man, they're good. She, I think she's pumping me, you know, testing me. I'm like, I really don't even, I'm listening to the music, Ronnie. I really don't even see the dancers. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh, if they need any escorting around, like going to Rise Pies. Security detail. Security yeah. detail. Right, Ronnie? Love you, Veronica. My fiance, Veronica Williams. I'm just not even going to touch this one today. And you, you're getting married in a few months, so you probably... <laughs> yeah. I don't give much advice. I don't notice them either. But yeah. Don't notice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy code. Yeah. It's a guy code. All right, King. Um, Thank you very one, much for having me, guys. One, make one, sure you eat lunch afterwards. We will. Thank one you. more time. Special during the finals. 310 special. Yeah, celebrating. Every, game, every Cavs game day in uh, our Boardman and Niles locations, we're going to go 310 cheese pizzas. Eddie, thanks for giving us a home today. Dennis, thank you. All right, thank you for doing it. I'll see you at the Lake Club tonight. Absolutely. I'll see you at the Lake Club tonight. He's actually a guest on this show. Uh, Yeah, 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 I know. I know. My ego is bigger than me sometimes. I'm sorry. You know, the funny thing is I always tell people, I say, if I had a talent to satisfy, or to as big as my ego, I'd be a billionaire. I have no talent. I just have a huge ego. (laughs) This is it. You bring joy every day. Oh, I agree. I make people laugh. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for dropping on by. Do you live August 2nd and 3rd. Our early bird tickets are on sale now until May 31st. 150 bucks will get you in the door. Use the promo code Facebook. Save an additional 10%. Last year, we sold the venue out. Over 200 people attended for an all-day marketing conference. Uh, this year, we're, we're, looking, we're likely going to double that in size. But get your tickets until May 31st. Save yourself some money because tickets are going up after that. And um, that's it, man. And if, you, if you're in this business or you need this as part of your business, you have to be there. It's a... It, You have to be there. Thank you, Ralph. See you guys.